Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential trigonometric equation. We have 16 to the power cosine x equals 4 to the power cosecant x. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be showing alternative approaches, even though you may not call them first, second method. Let's see how this goes. All right, first of all, I want to get rid of the exponent and move this to a trigonometry problem, make it a trigonometry problem. How can I do that? I have 16 and 4 that are friendly bases, right? They get along well. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace 16 with 4 to the second power. And then that's going to give us something nice because now we can multiply the exponents. 4 to the power 2 cosine x equals 4 to the power cosecant x. Awesome. Now we can get rid of the bases completely. And of course, we're kind of talking about the real solutions here. In the case of complex solutions, that's another story. We can also talk about it. Okay. Now, how do we handle this? Well, since the bases are equal, so are the exponents. This means 2 cosine x equals co secant x. What is cosecant? We don't see that very often, right? We see secant more often. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. And when I was trying to memorize these, like I was looking for an easier way to do it. And this is what I kind of figured out or maybe I heard from someone else. I don't know, remember. So here's how it goes. We are going to go from one of these functions to the other as the reciprocals. So the reciprocal of sine cannot be secant because they both start with S. Makes sense? So the reciprocals are going to be different letters or different initials. Makes sense? I hope this helps. Now, so we can write cosecant as 1 over sine and then cross multiply. Notice that sine x should not be 0. Now think about it. If you, what happens if sine is 0? Cosecant will be undefined. It's not going to work. So we're good multiply both sides by sine x or cross multiply you get the following does that look familiar i hope it does because this is something you'll see very often if you're doing trigonometry okay so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to do a little bit of um, trigonometric touch or should i say pythagorean touch i'm going to go ahead and add sine squared x plus cosine squared x to both sides but wait a minute isn't sine squared plus cosine squared equivalent to 1? Yes, it is. So in other words, I'm adding 1 to both sides. Isn't that cool? So that's the beauty of math. I mean, there's so many things that make math beautiful, but I guess this is one of them, one of the so many things, that you can add seemingly different things on different sides of an equation, but get the uh, true statement. Anyway, so we get something like this. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus 2 sine x cosine x equals 2. Awesome. Right hand side is simple. Left hand side can also be turned into a perfect square. That's why we're adding it. It's a whole motivation. I'm like, where does this come from? We are trying to get that. Okay. That's the whole idea. So now this is sine x plus cosine x to the second power. And we have a 2 on the right hand side. What does that tell you? Something squared equals 2. So if you square root both sides, you get sine x plus cosine x equals root 2. And there's another solution, right? There are two numbers. Sine x plus cosine x equals negative root 2. I'm going to leave the negative root 2 with you and just focus on this one. Why? because I'm lazy. <laughs> well, the rest is left as an exercise for you, too bad. Now, here's what we can do about this equation. There's, again, a couple different ways to look at it, but the, the approach that I really like is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by root 2 over 2, which is a special number, by the way, right? So we're going to get that. Now, when you multiply, it's going to look like this. Sine x times root 2 over 2, plus root 2 over 2 times cosine x, and it's going to be 1. Awesome. There is a reason why I switch these things around, but 
if you call this cosine of pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, and if you call this sine of pi over 4, I'm not using parentheses, I, don't, I hope you don't mind, and that should be understood, we get the following. Sine x times cosine pi over 4 plus sine pi over 4 times cosine x. What does this tell you? If it does tell you the sum formula, you're on the right track. So this is basically sine of x plus pi over 4. Look at the formulas, you'll see it, and it's equal to 1. What does that mean? Sine what equals 1? <laughs> There's only one value between 0 and 2 pi, right? And that is what? Pi over 2? 90 degrees, of course. So this needs to be pi over 2. But if x plus pi over 4 is pi over 2, then x must be pi over 4. Great. But is that the only solution? That's a good question. Remember, we did not look at the other branch. That is for you to check. Okay? Please let me know what you find. So we're going to leave it at that. Definitely. I'm not saying definitely, by the way. I should be careful because we squared both sides, right? Well, we got a perfect square and we square rooted both sides. So that could bring in extraneous solutions. So I'm going to put a big giant or here and say I'm going to pick it up from here. 2 sine x cosine x equals 1. Remember, that's what we had after the getting rid of the exponents and the cross multiplication. And I'm going to use something a lot easier. I'm not, I know when I did the first method, some people are thinking, why is he doing it the hard way, the hardest way? What? Okay, I want to offer alternative solutions. That's why, okay? Is that convincing enough? Anyways, so th there is a formula for double angle, and that's just called sine of 2x. Sine of 2x is equal to 1. You like that? And from here, we can say that, okay, 2x is then pi over 2, just like before, but we're also allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, like this. Divide both sides by 2. Be very careful. If you have a negative number, a negative angle, don't divide. First, add 2 pi, okay? You'll see uh, why. And this is going to be pi n. n is an integer, right? It's always like that. Now, if n is equal to 0, we're going to get x equals pi over 4. We already knew that, right? That's a solution. That's an obvious solution. n equals 1 gives us 5 pi over 4. Are they both good solutions? No. We didn't do anything bad, so they should both be good because we didn't square both sides. So there should be nothing extraneous. Notice that with the first approach or method, whatever you're going to call it, we got a single solution because we haven't looked at the other case. But does that give us... 5 pi over 4, that's something for you to find out. Anyways, so that's pretty much the whole idea, but I want to show you one more thing. How do you handle the complex scenario, right? And of course, I'm going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha, right? Okay, so there is a formula for sine of theta if you want to go into the complex world, and then this is what it is. I think on my other channel, which is A plus B I, by the way, check it out if you haven't done so. Shameless self-promotion. Okay, and you'll find a lot of information about complex numbers. But this is one of the formulas, right? This is one of the formulas. And if you apply it on 2x, right, you're going to get the following. Sine of 2x equals e to the power 2ix minus e to the power negative 2ix divided by 2i and then set this equal to 1, right? That makes sense, doesn't it? And from here, you're going to get something super duper interesting. And that's, that's kind of surprising to me too, because when you look at Wolfram Alpha, you're, not, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Anyways, to keep a long story short, you can go ahead and cross multiply this, and then call this something. How about Z? Let's call this Z. This will be 1 over Z. Now we can go ahead and multiply everything by z. z squared minus 1 equals 2iz. Let's put everything on the same side. z squared minus 2iz minus 1 equals 0. Now, you can solve this with the quadratic formula. And you're going to get something interesting. Should we do it? Let's do it. And then I'll show you the alternative. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4i squared, minus 4ac, which is plus 4, because c is negative 1, divided by 2. Uh-oh, i squared is equal to negative 1, 4i squared is negative 4. These two cancel out, leaving us with 0. The discriminant is 0. You know what that means? Z equals i. We have a single solution. We have a perfect square. 
So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. z squared minus 2iz minus 1 equals 0. All right? That's basically z minus i squared. Get that? Because negative 1 is i squared. So this gives us z equals i again. Same idea. Well, does z equal i satisfy this equation? You can go ahead and plug it in and find that, but it should work. So here we go. The, basically the, the, complex, um, the complex world, right? Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and take a look at something. First of all, the graph of these two functions. Don't they just touch nicely here? That's one solution. Another solution here. What do you think they correspond to, right? One of them is definitely pi over 4. And the other one is probably negative 3 pi over 4, which we didn't find. We found 5 pi over 4. Wait a minute. They're the same, right? Pretty much. And this is what Wolfram Alpha gave me for complex solutions. Pretty complicated. I wanted to cut it off so that you know it doesn't end here. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.